everyone, it's Ellen here again, and today I wanted to share with you some tips and tricks I have on how to change out your guitar strings. This is a really important skill to learn if you want to master your guitar because based on how much you play it, um, your strings do need to be changed out quite often. So um, go ahead and stay tuned if you want to learn how to change out your guitar strings. So the first thing I like to do is to set up my work area by laying a towel on the ground just so that my guitar has something a little bit cushioned to lay on top of. And then I'm putting some newspaper down on top of that because I will also be cleaning my fretboard which can kind of be a messy process. So go ahead and click on this video if you want to learn how to clean your fretboard. But now back to restringing the guitar. So I'm going to teach you guys three different ways that you can remove your old strings. The first way is without any tools at all, completely by hand, which is what I'm doing right now. And you can see that I'm just loosening those tuning pegs until the string unravels itself a little bit. And I'm doing that until there's a little bit of slack, such as how you see here. And then once you have enough slack, you can focus your attention on the bridge part of your guitar where the bridge pins are. And now we're just going to remove the bridge pin of the string that we just loosened. It kind of can be hard sometimes, you gotta use a little bit of force because it can be wedged in there. But now you just remove the ball end of the string and then follow it up back towards the headstock. And now you can just use your hands to unwind the rest of the string and just kind of follow it around until you get to where it's in the hole of the capstan and then you just want to remove that portion and then your string is free and you're done with that first string. So now let me go ahead and focus on how to use some tools. I bought a really cool one, which is a wire cutter on one end, and then on one of the handle ends, it has a bridge pin remover, and then on the other handle, it has a peg unwinder. I'm not sure if these words are actually um, legitimate words, but this is just what I like to call them. And so it really just helps when you're unraveling the string because watch, when you turn it, it just goes a lot faster than by hand. And I got this for like $8 on Amazon, so it was very cheap and affordable. And so now you can see I'm doing the same thing I was doing on the first string, except now I'm using this tool and it's just going a lot faster. And you can just focus on how the string has been loosened around the capstan. And so now again, I'm showing you how much slack there is between the neck of the guitar and the old string. And once you have that much slack, again, you can focus your energy on the bridge, focus on that bridge pin. And this time I'm using my little handy tool to remove that bridge pin. And then again, you just want to remove the ball end of the string. And then back on the head, you just want to unravel your string until it comes out of the capstan, which I was having a little bit of trouble with here. That happens, don't worry about it. <laughs> and um, so now the third way you can remove your string, again, starts out the same. You just want to unravel your string a little bit until you have some slack. And I decided to use my winding tool again because it's just a lot faster and easier that way. And I'm just drawing attention to making sure that you unravel your string the right direction because you definitely don't want to make it tighter. That would be very, very bad. So again, you can see there's a lot of slack, but this time I'm going to be using my guitar string cutter to go cut my string in half right around like the 12th fret or so. Give that string a snip and then again focus on the head of the guitar, unwind that old string, take the string out of the hole of the capstan, go back to the bridge. This bridge pin was really hard to remove so I actually used a pair of pliers which I would not recommend unless it's really really stuck which like that one was. And I also ended up putting my rolled up yoga mat underneath the neck of my guitar just to give myself a little more leverage and to help me remove the strings a little bit easier. Okay, so now I just wanted to show you guys a close up of one of my old strings. I have been a very bad guitar mama. You should never let your strings get this dirty. All of the black and gray that you see is from the oil and sweat that's been on my fingers whenever you play. That's just natural and it collects over time. And then it's actually a little bit green too and that's from the bronze oxidizing. So yeah, you definitely want to switch out your strings before this happens. 
So anyway, once you remove it, an easy way to toss it in the trash is to wind it up in a circle and then twist the ends within themselves and it'll just kind of hold the string together. It's just a lot easier to throw away that way. And then this would be the part where you clean your fretboard, but we'll go ahead and skip over that for now. And once your fretboard is clean, we can go ahead and restring the guitar. I'm going to be using Daddario Light Phosphor Bronze Strings. As you can see, I've been using these strings for a while because it came in quite a large pack, but I like them. And you can see the back of the packet also has a sort of guide to tell you which color corresponds with which string. And most guitar strings will do that as well, so you should be able to figure out which one goes with which. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start with my low E string by unraveling it from the packaging and then putting the ball end back into the bridge. And each of your bridge pins should have a groove where the string, you know, kind of lines up in. So I just made sure that my string was lined up in the groove and then I pushed that bridge pin in really tightly into the bridge. And you just wanna make sure that when you pull on the string a little bit, just a little tug, that the bridge pin does not pop out because that would be really bad. Then you just wanna double check that your string is aligned with the little groove that is in the saddle. Um, it should do this by itself when you tune, but just to kind of make sure, you wanna make sure you line that up as best as possible. And then you want to take the top end of your string and you're going to lace it through the hole of the capstan and then pull that not all the way through. You do wanna leave slack so that you have enough string left over to wrap around the capstan a couple of times. So just a general rule is the more slack you leave over the neck of your guitar, the more times your string will wrap around the capstan, which just makes it a little bit more secure. So now you can see I'm starting to tighten the string and I'm just doing it by hand this time. And I'm turning the peg so that the string is wrapping around so that it's facing towards the outside, like it's facing towards the peg. It'll make a little more sense if you focus on the center here. So now you can see the string is wrapped around counterclockwise and it's facing outwards towards the peg, which is what you want. And now I'm just repeating that process with my A string. Again, you can see the groove that's in my bridge pin, which I'm lining up with the A string. And then I'm pushing that bridge pin really tightly down into the bridge so that the string does not become loose and is pretty tight in there. Again, you wanna line it up with the groove in the saddle. Go ahead and string it all the way up your guitar when you get to the head. Then lace that string through the hole of your capstan. And now you want to put it on the middle of the left. So just to double check with you guys, you want your low E string to be on the bottom left followed by your A string in the middle left and your D string on the top left. And so one thing you also want to remember while you're restringing your guitar is that the further up you go as far as the tuning pegs go, also it should be the further inward you go. So um, let me try to explain. As long as you make sure your strings are following where those grooves are in the nut, you shouldn't have a problem. But just to like kind of eyeball it, you wanna make sure that your strings go inwards as you go up. So for instance, I am stringing my A string right now and I just wanna make sure that it is more inwards than my low E string, which I had previously strung. So um, hopefully this picture helps and hopefully you understand what I'm saying. So now that I've wrapped my A string once all the way around the capstan, I'm going to start to kind of wrap it around more while tuning it and you can see that I'm picking that string just to make sure that I'm not tightening it too fast. And that's also why I'm using my polytune clip just to make sure that as I slowly turn my peg it's getting and it's getting closer to the note that I want it to be at. Um, you just want to make sure you're not tuning it too fast because it's never happened to me, but it has been known that if you turn your pegs too quickly, your string can break, which would be really bad and sad and probably hurt. So um, yeah, be careful. <laughs> So go ahead and repeat this process for the rest of your strings until they are all securely on your guitar. And just keep in mind that you don't have to tune it right now. In fact, you don't want to tune it right now. You just wanna make sure that these strings are attached to your guitar. So now you're at the point where you want to retune your guitar. And
and um, depending on how many times you wrapped it around the capstan, your string might still make that buzzing noise. And if it does, that's totally fine. You just want to keep tightening your string until it kind of stops making that noise and you can decipher a note. And I'll typically use a tuner for this part just so you can physically see when your string is about to hit its target note. So since I'm tuning my low E, I was waiting until it hit the D note and I was then slowing down my peg turning and uh, turning it very slowly just until it hit the target note. So here is an example of that. So you can see here I'm barely turning that tuning peg. Um, I just don't want to pull it too much too quickly. And so as I'm getting closer to the desired note, I'm just turning it a little bit by a little bit at a time. And now this is an example of something that happens quite often and might happen to you while you're retuning your guitar. <laughs> so that high pitched ting was the string just kind of loosening and um, when it does that it makes the note lower so then you just have to retune it and it's no big deal. So now I just want to take a minute and answer some frequently asked questions that you guys left on my Instagram. Um, Games Dean ha asked how often you should change your strings and that's kind of a loaded question just because it depends on every individual person and how often you play your strings and for how many hours a day and things like that. So say you're a person who plays your guitar every single day for multiple hours a day, you might need to change your strings after probably a month or so, maybe even a few weeks. Um, but then if you're the kind of person who kind of leaves your guitar in the corner for a while and just picks it up whenever you feel like it, you probably don't need to change it until it gets really gritty and dirty from the dust that collects on it. Or, um, you know, whenever the strings feel like they need to be changed. It's really kind of an internal process. Whenever your strings don't sound right to you, that's when you should change them. Carter K asks, how long does it take for new strings to stop stretching? And um, that just really depends on how often you play it after you've tuned it. But a really cool thing to do is to pull on each string after you've tuned it, just like I'm doing here. You want to do it around maybe the 12th fret. And you just want to stretch it out because this is actually going to untune your strings and loosen them. But then when you retune it, they'll be a lot more accurate and they'll stay in tune longer. Bromo Elephant asked what type of strings should I use and that depends on what kind of guitar you have. So if you have a classical guitar you want to stick with nylon strings but if you have an acoustic guitar like mine you have a couple of different options available to you and the things that I like to pay attention to when choosing strings are the material and the gauge. So for materials you have things like brass, bronze, and steel which all kind of produce different sounds and for the gauge or thickness you have lighter strings which are easier to play but um, can break more easily or heavier strings that sound fuller and richer but of course they're thicker so they're harder to play. It really depends on personal preference so I would recommend trying out different types of strings with different materials and different gauges until you find one that you like. BriBri207 asked do you need to change all the strings at the same time or only the ones that snap or break? And the answer again varies. Um, if your strings are pretty much brand new and only one breaks, then of course just change that one string out. But if you've been playing on them for a while and one of your strings breaks, that could also be a sign that it's time to change out the rest of your strings just because they're old and you know you've been playing on them for a long time. Personally, if I'm going to be taking the time to change out one string, I like to just get all of them done together. So once you've finally got your guitar in tune, then the very last step in this process is we want to get rid of all of this excess string that's hanging from the head of the guitar. So I'm just taking my wire cutters and I'm getting as close to that capstan as possible and then I'm giving it a snip and it's going to leave kind of a pointed um, edge. I don't really have any advice on how to get rid of that just because that's how my guitar has always been, but it doesn't usually bother me because I don't play anything at that area so it doesn't scratch me or anything like that. 
Tiger Girl asked, is it a good idea to clean the fretboard each time you change the strings? And I think the answer is definitely yes. You want to clean it by wiping it down with a soft cloth or a microfiber cloth every time, just because the strings are not there and it'll be easier to clean. But as far as using oils and other products like that, you want to limit it to about once or twice a year, just because you don't want to overwhelm your fretboard with product. And another piece of advice I have is just to clean your fretboard every single time after you play and it'll really just help extend the life of your strings. And lastly, Asme Boyce asked, is it that important to change your strings? Do old strings affect the sound of your guitar? And to help me answer that question, I've recruited one of my very talented friends to play you the difference. Thank you. 